One, two, three. Hello, welcome to Rock the Cash Bar. I'm Ben Mowbray. And I'm Diane Gallagher. Every week we pick one song and do a deep dive into the lyrics and explain the different ways they've been interpreted. We will also discuss how the song connected to us on a personal level, focusing on all the embarrassing details. Glad to have you here. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the... Whoa, Diane. Hi. What? (laughs) What? Nothing. Nothing. You're looking particularly gorgeous today. <laughs> For those <laughs> not, go ahead. Diane is in full Madonna costume. I mean, full Madonna costume. What costume? Teased, teased blonde hair, ruby red lipstick, and of course, Madonna's customary beer and a koozie. <laughs> yeah, she, she loved beer. <laughs> it's sparkling water. <laughs> I'm on a sugar detox. Very, very funny. Sarah Tolomash, live from New York. Sarah, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me, guys. It's a pleasure. We're talking Madonna today. We are? No, okay. I'll, I'll drop the... <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> so you have a full Madonna costume on hand at all times? Uh, not my first time dressing up as Madonna. I've done it quite a few times. So, yeah. I have a box of Halloween costumes and I just, I pull out, oh, but this, like this part of my outfit, this is my swimsuit cover up. So yeah, (laughs) (laughs) it just, you know, a lot of things about the eighties, you just throw, you just keep throwing shit on and it just works. Accessorize. I just, I was telling telling Sarah before we started, like how, it sucks at the end of the night, like going dancing. And then you're like, I got to take off this necklace. And now this bracelet, and then all these 20 bracelets, like what a, mm-mm. this is a little much. Does Corbin yeah. ever dress up like Sean Penn on Valentine's day? Is this a thing that you guys do? Corbin would probably, he's going to scream when you hear you, hears you say that because he hates Sean Penn with every fiber of his being. Okay. I not- am there. I mean, <laughs> put himself in the forefront of every issue and just be the most self-centered prick ever. <laughs> you know something like bad's going on if Sean Penn is showing up to it. Oh, gosh, shit. Corbin <laughs> stopped loving Scarlett Johansson because she touched his penis, <laughs> we think. They dated. Um, yeah, when he started si- like siding with the, the communist dictators, Corbin was like, I'm out, fuck this guy, I hate him. <laughs> No, it's, he's embarrassing. (laughs) I really wanted to go to his book tour. He wrote a book that like I've read a few excerpts from it and it's just batshit insane. Like I watched, I watched him make like the rounds on the, on the talk shows and it's clear like he was friends with Hunter S. Thompson and like anybody who reads any, any man who reads any amount of Hunter S. Thompson, you immediately fall in love and start to emulate. Well, he got it real bad. Like you read (laughs) from this book and you're just like dude nobody is ever going to be hunter like it's just never going to happen but he went on a full book tour like he was at borders books or something like that here a couple of years ago i was like i have to go like i have to go see yeah this and read his nut job piece did you no i no. didn't <laughs> all right um i have a friend that periodically dates his son and uh he sounds like a huge prick really in, inside inside gossip guys <laughs> let's just do, let's not even talk about the song let's just gossip <laughs> uh, that's, that's my personal cutting off oh i said how does uh, how does one go about even meeting sean pan's kids well she's extremely wealthy and she is you know born and raised in new york so i think she just was in that circle travels in those circles yeah but um that's my personal opinion of what she tells me about him and then uh knowing his or like how I feel about his dad then I'm like oh it's probably just like father like son so yeah. I just like to throw out that kind I don't I'm irresponsible with my information so there <laughs> <Yeah>. you go <laughs> right everyone is <laughs> it's the it's world 
Sean yeah. Penn's going to bust in and tie us to our chairs with a phone cord. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the other thing. Like, everybody kind of forgets that he did beat the shit out of Madonna. Mm. <gasps> oh. That's was, so like bad. If I'm if I'm correct, I think I think she denies it now, but obviously alleged it at the time. Like, like I think wasn't there some kind of like like legal resolution or something on that where, where where she said in court that it didn't happen, but obviously there's quotes going back years where she's insisting that it did. Yeah. That's and I know um Charlize Theron and him were dating and they she unex like just ghosted him. And I always feel like when a kind of like a when a female ghosts the male, it's because something's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because breaking off all contact is the only thing you can do. Like anything else. Yeah, is- yeah. Exactly. I remember, I remember watching that that Blonde Ambition tour movie that they made, like the documentary that followed it. And um, they were, I don't know if they were playing like Truth or Dare, like her and all of her dancers. And someone asked her, who's the love of your life? And she was like, it's Sean, like back then. Yeah. Um, you know, and they were long divorced, but she, I th- she still thought fondly of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess that happens because I doesn't like Rihanna still kept going back to like Chris Brown. Mm-hmm. That it's a thing. It's a thing. I know so many girls that had like the worst relationships of their lives, and they still fantasize about these dudes. There's a draw to it. <laughs> I think it's. Because there's like a reward system that happens, right? Like they, mm-hmm. you know, and then they reward you. And so you're kind of addicted to that like dopamine that you get. Yeah. Or whatever it's called. There's a passion. I don't want to give away any names of any friends, but yeah, one of my friends had someone that would do that, treat her very, very bad. And then the next day come like literally pick her up like a baby and lift her and be like, I will get help. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. And you're so beat down that you're just like, oh, you do love me. And uh, and it feels so good to be comforted by the person that hurt you. You know, it's wild. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's hard. It- I've done similar things. Like I'm not a violent guy or an abusive guy, but I've definitely been in relationships that have gone sour and turned bad. And I've definitely showed up with the rose between my teeth. Just like I could change, baby. I could change. And you want to. Like it's a sincere desire to do it, but how the fuck are you going to do it? <laughs> like can yeah. you actually change is necessary i don't know no i don't know all, all right, right. This is, i love that we started with a domestic abuse <laughs> violence let's keep it light let's just do domestic abuse <laughs> all right yeah all right well let's do it let's talk about like a virgin um okay i'm just gonna say up front i'm gonna eat a lot of crow on this episode because last week's episode we did taylor swift and i was in a mood and i was talking shit about pop music and there's i don't like it we don't like happy music and then um we're talking about the queen of pop music and i'm like i fucking loved all of this so (laughs) i'm I'm gonna be a complete hypocrite and i'm gonna just apologize for everything i said last week (laughs) there's nothing wrong with that this is like a virgin by madonna everybody knows the lyrics I made it through the wilderness. Somehow I made it through. Didn't know how lost I was till I found you. Great little rhyming. I don't know if that's a couplet, but it's a nice little, didn't know how lost I was till I found you. It's like song lyrics are sometimes like jokes. Like the best ones are just staring you right in the face. (laughs) Absolutely. The simpler, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will get into the history of it later, but I want to just say up front as we read the lyrics, this was written by a dude. Yeah, that surprised me. That absolutely was, shocked me. Was it a straight male? I can't tell. So I, I I read the interview and then I watched the interview on YouTube and he doesn't specify, but when you look at him, you're like, this could have been a, he could have been a gay relationship. Yeah. 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 I guess it doesn't matter. I just don't know what the dynamic, I'm only speaking in a hetero form. Like right. I can't imagine a guy feeling to feel like a virgin just yeah date at that time period it doesn't because it feels like for women we're valued as being like precious little flowers that no one's touched 
Right. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to feel like a virgin. I'd like to scrub some of the dirt off me. I definitely feel like Lady Macbeth. <laughs> 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 well, no, that's yeah. interesting because I, I they hear that from the uh, like a straight male point of view. Yeah. I would definitely like to feel like a virgin again. Like I, re I really would. Now, now I, I, I say that at 42, you know, at, at 25 or 26, I probably would have had a completely different idea. But yeah, right now, uh, there's only so much of my sexual history that I'm that I'm proud of or that I think was healthy. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> there's a way that I could go back to it. I think every man, if they're being honest, has has creepy sexual thoughts and, and 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 are besieged by fantasies every now and again there's definitely plenty of times where I'm just like I wish I could just blow that out of my brain you know like they're I used to joke just like it's it smells like 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 I feel like my brain has shit its skull and the other people are beginning to smell it oh, God. Like yeah definitely <laughs> kind of kind of, is there a bleach valve in my head that I can turn on to forget about some of the things I've seen some of the things I've watched on this little phone, some of the desires I've had, I would love to get rid of that. I think it's a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the 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 song the songwriting team was Tom Kelly and Billy Steinberg. And um, I'll just say real quick that they wrote a lot of really famous songs during that time. Uh, Eternal Flame by the Bangles, um, So that. Emotional by Whitney Houston, True Colors by Cyndi Lauper, and alone by heart. Um, I'm gonna say this is a gay guy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you missed what I think arguably the biggest one. Like they, they say that like a prayer is their biggest song, but they also wrote the pretenders I'll stand by you. Oh wow. That's a great one. That really is. Like like if those are their 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 five biggest hits, I gotta say I think their work with the pretenders is their best stuff. Yeah. I'll stand or I'll stand by you. That's a song that Joe and I will just randomly duet together. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's a great song, though. And it's so cheeseball, but it's good. Oh, I could just so picture you guys like on the road, on a road trip, just looking like out the window and then at each other and then out the window and at each other. <laughs> I'll stand by you. <laughs> I'll stand by you. Yeah, it's so good. But I also, I've been jamming out to Alone a lot lately too. So I think maybe these songwriters kind of speak to me. Yeah, mm. these guys are good. Um, yeah. I'll just read this quick little thing so we can just get over it and get back to the lyrics. Um, in a Song Facts interview with Billy Steinberg, he told the story of the song. He said, my father was a farmer. He was a grape grower in the Coachella Valley. And our vineyards were in this little town called Thermal, California. I remember writing the lyrics to Like a Virgin while driving in a red pickup truck that I owned around our dusty desert vineyards. I had been involved in a very emotionally difficult relationship that had finally ended and I met somebody new. I remember writing that lyric about feeling shiny and new. I made it through the wilderness. Somehow I made it through. Uh, I made it through this very difficult time. So he was saying, you know, leaving a bad relationship and then just seeing the beauty of a healthy one. Like, yeah, I bet it is very like cleansing. And then you got a shiny new <laughs> genitals to work with, I guess. <laughs> 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 I <laughs> I've never gone from like from like one relationship and then and then 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 you know mourned it and got over it and then into another one like within a couple of months like it's just, have you like what's the quickest turnaround you've had like the quickest like major breakup from major relationship to major relationship what's the tightest turnaround you've ever done I've had a really tight turnaround and it both of them were bad so mm -hmm. that mind I was like you know I always felt like when you have a quick turnaround it's probably not great mm -hmm. mine was eight months is my lucky number I've had three like Corbin is my third you know long relationship I had two five-year relationships back to back before him and it was eight months in between the two um that's great that's a, I, I think that's a healthy amount mine was like within days oh shit yeah oh. yeah no, Were they long remember. relationships, like long relationship, <laughs> give it a couple hours, next long relationship? Well, in your 26 months kind of feels long, but in hindsight, uh, they were short candles, mm. quick and then out really fast. Right. Yeah. So, I've never been 
I have to, I have to mope for years. I think I gotta, I have to wander through the wilderness of my soul for seven years in Tibet till I can come back and love again. Well, I will say I didn't jump into, you know, there's eight months between long relationships, but it was a couple times hours before the next hookup. That's <laughs> 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 just because you're fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had been ready. <laughs> Whoops. Um, don't tell I was, me. I was consoling a girl once years ago. She was crying because she'd just broken up with her boyfriend. Like, I mean, she, she was Minutes. at the, yeah, like at the bar next door, they just had the conversation. She came into where I was closing up and she's just weeping on the bar stool. And then a half an hour later, she was, it was her initiation. I had nothing to do with it. Within within like a half an hour of that, she was kissing me, and I was just like, "You're just obviously replacing." I feel her. I feel it. You just I want know. To feel better. <laughs> and just, and then you're listening, and the guy probably wasn't listening, and so she was like, "This is great." <laughs> <laughs> I will transfer my emotions onto you, skinny man. <laughs> And skinny man's like, I mean, what am I gonna say? No. <laughs> yeah. Say no, but obviously, like she my head and my heart were definitely just like, I don't know if I want to like you'll do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I've done for people in the past, and I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get through let's at least get to the next verse. I was beat incomplete. I'd been had. I was sad and blue, but you made me feel. Yeah, you made me feel shiny and new. That's it. Nice. People can't do that for you. Like a virgin touched for the very first time. I don't know. Like, I, yeah, I would like, I said earlier, like I would like to feel like a version again in the sense that I would like to be innocent again. I'd like to be free of certain parts of my history again, but I don't want to go through losing my virginity. <laughs> 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 it was not no. the experience for it. Does anybody want to talk about it? Mm, uh, like their first time? Yeah. You go first, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> my in England and it was with a guy that I was there for about a month and I he became friends with me he was at down at the local pub but he also did a lot of like you know mowed people's yards and I would see him around the neighborhood and then uh it was kind of one of those things where I feel like at like 19 you're like it's time and so we was a pool party and then we went upstairs to this house and then I lost it there and it wasn't great. Um, well, it was just kind of like, it probably was somebody that I didn't know fully that well. I mean, I did for about a month, but we wasn't like we were dating. Um, and then I just watched him jerk off. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot for the first time. <laughs> What? if you don't mind my asking how old was he not much older than me maybe one or two years older okay it's better so, than he's yeah. like he was 40 <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> no. like, I know, like when i was 16 or 17 years old the thought of, of, of masturbating in front of a woman would be like no absolutely not never <laughs> not gonna do that <laughs> well i also feel like maybe in england i felt like American girls, I thought during this time period, like 97 or 98, I had a feeling of like, we were like kind of slutty from the movies, but I actually thought of England being a little bit more open sexually than Americans are. I felt Americans are actually quite prude. Yeah. yeah. 
dating and not being precious about your virginity. And there wasn't a religious aspect, not that I grew up with that, but definitely growing up in Texas, it's like reiterated over and over again, like you're back, you know, like you would try yeah. to keep your number low. And yeah. now as you get older, you're like, who cares? Does that no. even matter? No. My number is anymore. <laughs> it's a young, it's a young person's game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, yeah, my first time was um it was nice because it was with a boyfriend, my first like long-term boyfriend and he had had se- he wasn't a virgin. Um he had had sex and I hadn't and he was sweet enough to wait like 5 or 6 months like dating me before we did that, which I always thought was super cool of him. Um yeah. and then it just happened in his bedroom and I remember afterwards um we went outside and smoked a cigarette and I did cry, but not because it was bad, but I was just like, it, like it's gone. Like it, I'll never have it back. I'll never not be a virgin again. And I cried and he got upset like, oh no. And I was like, no, no, it's fine. It's just an emotional moment. Like here it is, that's, it's gone forever. Um, and I was late too. Like I may say late, I was 17. And it, like, I was the last of my friends, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I felt like. It just felt like it was time. And honestly, I was dating a really nice guy before I left who treated me so well. And I regret, I wish that I lost it with him. Right. And he would have been, I know he was totally willing because he, you know, it kind of lightly came up a lot, but and looking back, I'm like that he was probably the more right guy to do that with than the guy that I chose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if we could all go back and rewrite our story. (laughs) Oh God. I know. I was talking to, not going to name any names, but I was talking to a friend of ours who is a mother of a, of a a teenage girl who's, who's, uh, I think 16 years old now. And, uh, she's lost her virginity and she talked to her mom about it pretty frankly. Like they had like a real, you know, like, like honest, I, I, I can't imagine, you know, like having that conversation as a teenager with, with my mom or dad. But I guess like like her daughter had come to her and said like like this has happened and I don't feel real comfortable about it, you know. And they've been so mom comforted her and explained like that's normal, that's that's what happens. It's a it's a natural progression. It's okay. So they were very loving about it. But then her daughter started a, a relationship with a with another boy who's a virgin, and her mother was telling her, "says Well, you have to remember like like if he's a virgin, you have to remember how you felt when when it happened for you, and understand that he's going through the same thing." And I was just floored that there's a generation of mothers that are having conversations that frank with their teenagers. Like, right. I, 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 I wish, because you and I are very similar with, we have parents, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was not, <laughs> I don't know. I just did not have that relationship with my mom. No, I think it was too difficult then. I think I think there's social forces that make it easier now. You know, like there's there's the, the conversation is wider because everything because of the internet, right? There's so right. much going into your kid's brain. You have to make sure that the healthy things are getting in there. Like there's just yeah. more anymore. Yeah, it's it's I'm jealous of like the way teenagers and parents talk now where you know, I think my parents were always like maybe all of ours are like, "No, please come to me with these things." But then when you're like, no, <laughs> no, no bro. I'm talking to you about this. Yeah, yeah. I was just was more like, you know, we are like in my mind. I'm like, we don't have to talk about this, right? Like, you know, we're doing it. Like me and him are doing it. Like, you know, right? Like we just, we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. Ugh. I hope, I hope to be, if I was in that position of a mom to be that open, I would, I would like to, cause that way you get more of an honest them have a healthier sex life for sure because like my parents got married my mom got married at 19 and my dad was 24 25 and so it's like it never even dawned on them how outside of the box I could get I was like you know Sarah give a guy like seven thousand dollars to buy a motorcycle because he flipped his car (laughs) only dating him for a month like to them they were like we didn't even think you would be that stupid <laughs> like I love when you tell the story 
that's so outside of the box that I got for them. They were like, we just thought that was common knowledge, but like, I never had conversations about how a guy should actually treat you and to know if somebody likes you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's really interesting. And yeah, looking back, I should have been well, okay, here's the thing. I, I, I was going to say it should have been easy for me to tell my parents I was having sex because they had me at 16. They had to quit high school, you know, like they knew yeah. teenagers have sex. But I think because they did that, they made it so clear to me my whole life, like, don't do what we did. Like, we love you. We're glad you're here, but do not get pregnant. Don't do this. So I was just like, well, I'm just not going to tell them I'm doing this, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, High school, whatever speakers that they got just scared the shit out of you about like STDs and get it, but you could just get pregnant all the time. Right. It, you're pregnant and dying of AIDS. Yeah. Like talking to some of my, my male friends, like I lost my virginity to it to like, if she was a it was age appropriate, but you know, like she was a girl, but she was a lot more experienced than I was. Like she, she was in control of the whole thing from start to finish. Like, like I didn't know anything like, 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 I don't mean to be too graphic about it, but I was on my back the entire time. Oh, you know? <laughs> all right. <laughs> because I didn't know what to do. And I was, I was afraid. Like I was like, I obviously I, I really wanted to like, 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 I, I like, like touching her and, and, kissing her was was enormously exciting for me but i was scared to death that i was doing the wrong thing or that i was going to be like 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 forcing her into doing like i i was really it's it's your first time so i was incredibly nervous but i don't think that i've ever been in the, in the position that 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 other men are in where you're where you're with somebody who's significantly less experienced than you are like I don't know how to how I would like if I had a son of my own who was fifteen or sixteen years old. I don't know how I would explain to him. It's like you, you got to be gentle. <laughs> you know, like I don't. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like I. Or like Sarah, we talked about that movie Lady Bird where she's on top for the first time. <laughs> she's like, who's <laughs> what girl is on top for her first time? <laughs> <laughs> I would have been horrified. Like, what? No. <laughs> that scene was so good of like, uh, the movies a guy should would make that would let you know he is not that interested in you. <laughs> that you're on top for your first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah. And you know, it's so weird to break down the dynamics of that. It's like, well, why? Like, what if it's both people's first time? Do both people feel awkward like being in control? Like, no, you do. No, you do it. No. <laughs> I don't think I, I, I haven't asked too many people, but I don't think I know anybody who who lost their virginity at the same time. I don't know. I don't think I've heard anybody tell me that that's their story. It's almost always been somebody was was vastly well. Even if you've done it once, you're vastly more experienced than anybody else. But. I have one story yeah. of a friend of mine. It's my favorite story. Um, her and this guy were at like a church camp teaching abstinence to kids all day, every day. <laughs> and that's where she lost her virginity <laughs> was yeah. to another camp counselor. She's like, all we did all day long was talk about it. It was just in our minds all day long and we're telling people not to do it. She's like, we couldn't not do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like a rest, like it's a perfect storm. It feels like that would be so hot. Yeah. Oh, the taboo of sex. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. It does sound like a really saucy, like not penthouse letter, but is there is there like a Mormon <laughs> porn mag? That seems like like Mormon porn. <laughs> <laughs> Mormon porn. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Like a virgin when your heart beats next to mine. Gonna give you all my love, boy. My fear is fading fast. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, like this, th th you could sort of take these lyrics as, as like being about a single sexual encounter or the span of a relationship. I like thinking about this as like a single sexual encounter where she is getting more comfortable with it, where she's yeah. like, I'm mean, just going back to what we were talking about earlier, which is like where you are afraid and you are very shy. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a second. 
I think I get why everybody's always talking about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is where you're no longer afraid to get up after sex and walk to the bathroom naked instead of like wrapping your clothes back around you and running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to think of like, remember, like you'd be like, yeah, I think I had an orgasm. And then you didn't. Oh. And you do have one, you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, then. if you say, I think yeah. I had, absolutely did not have. <laughs> I was lucky in that regard that I, I did. I had one. I was always aware of what one was. Um, and I had a friend who it's really weird. Like as an adult, she was very like kind of open. She was very hot and like all the guys looked at her and liked her and she had boyfriends and she was a big flirt and then just drunk one night. She just in her twenties openly admitted she'd never had an orgasm. We're like, what? what like how can you be so kind of like openly sexual and promiscuous it's like she was just trying to get it like trying to pull it in but she'd never mm -hmm. had one yeah i think there's a lot of most women can't orgasm with just like the penis right yeah there you need it Ben, does that anymore. hurt does that hurt to hear that <laughs> no not anymore. Like when, when I was, when I was younger, yeah, I probably, like I would have taken it as a, as a challenge, but I do wish that, um, like now that I'm older, like I, 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 I use vibrators a lot you know? <laughs> like I I like because, because, because obviously watching a woman climax is incredibly erotic and it's also like, it's, it's also the right thing to do. And I wish that, that the older men, like that, the guys that, that, that I learned sex and sexuality from, I wish they said something like that. Like, you've got to finish the job. It's okay if you need an extra tool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Just touch a different part of it even. Just, it's, yes. yeah. So, so, so many things. <laughs> I know, well, it's like, guys shouldn't feel bad about it because I think statistically, it's like majority of women can't just reach it with just penetration. Right. Yeah. And also like, like having been through a couple of, of, of long-term relationships and, and obviously, you know, had sex with women that I care about, you have like the intimate conversations about it. I think I came to understand that it, like a woman can't really climax unless she really trusts the man that she's with. Like there, there's a mental decision-making process, I think, that goes on in a woman's brain where she's just like, where she allows herself like, all right, I'll climax if I can. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't well, so cerebral during sex i mean yeah here i've been trying to do this as a joke but it never lands and it's nobody thinks it's funny but i i pretend i think is the only way that i can come is if i answer all my emails first <laughs> yes <laughs> because yes. as you get older you are used to sex or whatever and now you're just like i need to get my life shit done and so that ends up clogging your brain rather than being like romantically involved like you've got other you're like i need to make money or i, I need to do all this stuff to get yeah. before i can get here adult problems sex is such a different wild world like i can start in the mood and then i get hijacked by world issues <laughs> and i'm just like ah, yeah. i'm out <laughs> i can't get back <laughs> <laughs> it sucks it sucks and i mean and yeah. i think that's why like people turn to porn and, and major kinks it's like we you gotta shock me for a second you know like how are you gonna get me back in the game you gotta do something you never done before because <laughs> yeah i used to have a joke that if i have sex for an hour that means i was bored for 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> no one should have sex that long no god <laughs> Give me a tight, like, what is on Six in the City? She's like, give me a tight eight. <laughs> and then, like, we're good. Absolutely. And then, like, remember when, like, Sting had that when he was into his tantric <sighs> sex? Uh, hours, you're like, that's. That's abuse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're going to, you're going to hurt, you're going to send her to a hospital. Like, you can just jerk off if you want for days or whatever you're doing and breathing. But, like, don't do that to a woman. That was just his orgasm. He was talking about having twelve-hour orgasms. So weirdly, like like sex with Sting is a, is a six-week operation. Like it's a long time. You got to devote yourself. Bring a toothbrush. <laughs> I'm say this right now, and this is controversial, but I think Sting's lying. I think he's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs>
We've talked about this on the podcast. Is this orgasm productive? I mean, is it hanging from the ceiling like stalagmites or whatever? Like, how? You can't. No, it's not happening. He's just fully exaggerating, but like, come on. You think, and we just let him do it. We just were like, okay. I mean, like, things having eight hour orgasms, you're like, he's not, he's lying. Yeah, because we're like, oh, he's just figured out a power and we're just going to believe it. That's Yeah, dumb. and he's making us feel inadequate, but you're like, he's just lying the whole time. Yeah. Did Madonna ever have sex? I really think that Madonna's the kind of lady who's like, well, let's just test this little theory sting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, someone should call him out and it's you. <laughs> it's, it's me. Wasn't there a Dennis Rodman? And I know this, people say this about might that she could be a bad lay oh that's but do you think i would say that people say that when they're like been butter. burned by somebody yeah i've yeah. heard uh, somebody said it about angelina jolie too that she just laid there and um you know you could see it both ways either they got butt hurt or um you can kind of see how girls that are so gorgeous and so lusted after never had to learn any skills to like, can you, do you like me now? What if I do this? What if I do this? Yeah. You know? <laughs> like they never had to learn those skills. <laughs> Men threw themselves at her. So she's like, I just got to look pretty and lay here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Madonna's panting alone makes her an excellent lover. That's all there is to that. Like I say that as a young boy who had the erotica album in his Walkman, you know, at like 11 or 12 years old, listening to her go, era, era. very formative memory for me. Oh yeah, watching her, watching her masturbate on a bed during the Blonde Ambition tour, you're like, what a letdown if she does none of that in bed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she just lays there. was firing guns at helicopters for her. She's good. She's good at what she does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I find that hard to believe that she would be bad. And also, I think it would be super hilarious if Madonna's little prank was to be a gray rock in, in bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, how funny would that be like, okay, and then you just lie there in a plank position and just kind of like lightly get pushed forward. <laughs> <laughs> making no door, no, just making like really bad eye contact the whole time, like. <laughs> 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 i could see her being like the kind of woman who's just like all right prove it hot shit you talked a good game come on then yeah 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 win me over to live up to but yeah the <laughs> sex book was amazing even though it did fall apart didn't it it was cheaply made oh i never had i don't know i don't know i was like oh, I the when you pull the pages they would pull like they would pull out of the binding Oh, that sucks to have like a bad book binder do your book. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you probably think it doesn't matter. It's like there's gonna be splattered all over bathroom walls anyway. That's the whole point. <laughs> the pictures up. Yeah, the they're frames. Yeah. All I know about Madonna's book Sex is that they did not have a copy of it at the Edmonton Public Library when I was twelve years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. all right, you're so fine in your mind. Yeah? Yeah. Is that where we are? Yeah. Oh, no, been saving it all for you because only love can last. Ooh, oh, yeah. Been all for you. Which is kind of like, 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 okay. Make me strong. Yeah, you make me bold. Oh, your love, I'm sorry. Oh, your love thought out. Yeah, your love thought out at what was scared and cold. Thought I never out. knew what she was saying there. Did you know that that's what she was saying? No. No. Okay. I, I, I've always just kind of just kind of skated over the lyrics to this one. I've never like actually. This is the first time I sat down and paid attention to what the actual lyrics to my conversion were. I think I yeah. thought she was saying, "And your love thought I wasn't scared at all." Ooh, that's Ooh. actually a lot more compelling. So your love thought out. Yeah, your love oh. thought out what was scared and cold. Okay, his love thought out in her what used to be scared and cold. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Or from the male perspective of the original th songwriter, it's just like like he got he got all cold and frozen inside from his previous relationship, and then this next person melted his heart once more. Mm. Not a lot is all hot and steamy. Yes. All right. Um, that's 
that's my favorite part in the relationship when you can finally just be yourself. <laughs> Do you let fart? your guard down? Um, I didn't used to, but I have to tell you, I've really embraced it in the last few years. <laughs> I've started to, and my husband's not a fan. <laughs> 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 ever get to that point because like, like, like speaking for myself when you're in a relationship where you do want to get married then that's like the that's the the real full force charm offensive like you think like it's oh you're yeah. the first to meet the woman you like like you better be on your best behavior like no it's like a couple of years in where you're like you're the one and i gotta convince you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i do say i i say i'm sorry after every time i do it but i don't mean it <laughs> i don't try to do it on purpose okay so Corbin and I just celebrated our 12th wedding anniversary two days ago, but we've been together since 2005 and he has never been a farter. He doesn't even like to poop in the same house with me. He's very like, no. And yeah. um, I try not to, but you know, I'm older. I'm on like this sugar cleanse, which means I'm eating cruciferous vegetables and beans. And um, yeah. So what happens is I'll do, I'll let something go that I think is going to be quiet and then it's not quiet. And then we make eye contact and he's like, really? And I'm just like, shut up. I'm a person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me do this. <laughs> and let me want to talk to me about your gas suppression techniques. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How are you so good at never? I've never heard him fart ever. No, it's not good for you either. No, and he's drinking like whey protein shakes now. I know he's gassy. Yeah, he must be hurting inside big time. <laughs> the gentleman, don't question it. Don't question it, Diane. Okay, fine. All right, just it's not good for you. It goes into the chorus again, like a virgin. Hey, touch for the very first time, like a virgin with your heartbeat next to me. You're so fine and you're mine. I'll be yours till the end of time because you, yeah, that's the, because you made me feel, you made me feel I have nothing to hide. Shiny uh, and new. There you go. That's love. Nothing to hide. It's nice. It's nice. Um, I, we don't have to go too much into like the making of the song, but it's funny. The two guys that wrote it, they made a demo and one of the guy's voice was really like falsetto, kind of like the guy from Foreigner. And so that's how he sang it on the demo, giving it to an artist, you know, that they can just have do whatever they want with it. But they said that she studied that demo and loved it so much. She did it exactly the way he sang it on the demo, even to the point where he just was having fun at the end where it fades off. He's like, we well, have beats and you hold me and you love me. And like, she just was, she did it exactly like he did it. Like she just, that's really cool. Like the, I'm, I'm assuming I'd love to hear so many demos versus the real one. Um, but this one, I, they, I heard it on this YouTube that I listened to and um, yeah, he, his, I think his version could have been a hit. It was really good. I like that last part too. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch. The ad lib stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. nice. Uh do we talk about the video? I mean, it was just, I don't know. I just want to talk about like when I was a kid, Madonna just changed everything. I mean, it was, I remember the moment where I was like, oh, the whole world knows this woman and she's fascinating. I, don't I think that. It's, I, I don't remember a time. Madonna's always been in my life. I don't remember a time getting to know her. She was just always there. I, I think. She came right when like MTV was on the forefront, like a perfect time of meeting together. And I just remember once Like a Virgin came out, because there she had another song before that, right? Holiday was the first hit. I don't think I knew about Holiday until she went on Blonde Ambition and she right. was doing opening with that song. And then I didn't, I liked it. That's when I liked that song. So the, my first introduction to Madonna was like a virgin and also Weird Al Yankovic uh, parodied it with like a surgeon. And I thought that was fun. And I think that also probably propelled it to a, a status. Yes. Higher than it probably anticipated. And on the notes that you gave me too, I remember that like a virgin MTV music award performance. And that was pretty epic too. That was like her coming out. Yeah. No one had ever done anything like this. Like 
not like this. I mean, people, they shopped this song around to other people. Nobody wanted it. No one wanted to say the word virgin in a song, but she was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, this is, this is my song. And then she just went, I mean, anybody who hasn't seen her MTV Music Award performance of this, like, go watch it. I mean, even for today, it's like, whoa, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I put it online on the top, like the Britney Spears kind of coming up with I'm a slave for you and her satisfaction one. Those were two, I think those are like the top performances of M when MTV was like at its best. Right. Do you, rem do you remember it, Ben, though? Do you remember her the first time you saw her uh, come out on that stage in that white wedding dress and then roll around and, I mean, no. so sexualized? It was it was always in, like, the, the mm. you know, Madonna, like, news package highlights. Like, I don't yeah. ever, like, I've, I've seen the whole thing in the, in the years since, but, no, when I was a kid, it was just, like, like you'd be watching, like, Inside Edition or a show like that, and they'd be going over like Madonna's latest controversy, or you know, or Sean Penn shooting at helicopters or whatever. And it was just one of the many clips that they would show of Madonna, like alongside the you know the oil can cone bra and yeah. uh, <laughs> right <laughs> and making it with the backup dancers. I just remember her being just, just like where I grew up. She was she was having the effect that she really wanted to have. Like she was she was definitely naughty she was scandalous exactly the way that she, you know, that she wanted to be, or at least yeah. that's the, way, that's the way that, you know, 11 or 12 year old me received her. Yeah. I just yeah. feel like, you know, we shit on a lot of pop music and, you know, pop stars and stuff, but I was like, they're all trying to be her. They all want to reinvent what Madonna did. And, you know, they do a pretty good job, but I'm just like, no one's ever gonna top that as far as like being a woman that shot up and just ch like changed everything on how they view women, the control of women, the sexuality that we can have. Um, she, I mean, no one's ever going to top how stunning that was. I think there's no doubt that she's the first female celebrity who, who fully owned her sexuality, you know, like obviously yeah. Marilyn Monroe and, and others had had traded on it or or men were trading on their sexuality but i think madonna was the first person who successfully said it belongs to me and you can't have it she went so big with it and she said like one of her um inspirations was debbie harry like you could just see how gritty and great debbie harry was um and madonna just took it she heightened it to a level no one had ever seen before yeah because i think i like deborah harry but she wasn't a personality outside of her music. I right. felt like she was quite quiet, where Madonna was actually really funny. Yeah. <laughs> and she wanted to do it all. She wanted to be in movies. She, yeah, I mean, she was an outlandish personality who you didn't hate. Like, you're just like, yeah. more. Give me more. What else you got? And she just kept reinventing herself, which is so fun. It's funny to think she's actually just like a loud girl from Michigan. Yeah, <laughs> a loud Italian girl from Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just, yeah, the ambition on this chick. Um, I do want to say we talked about Holiday and I watched this, so um, so I'm not plagiarizing. Everybody should go watch on YouTube Madonna, Secrets of Her Breakthrough Hits. And they kind of go through her top three, like, first hits. And um, so Holiday was written by this guy named Curtis Hudson, and what he said is that he wrote it as an antidote to the depressing world of events of the early 80s. And so last week we were talking about pop music and I was just like, oh, I don't like it. And um, then we did a Patreon episode with Patrick McClellan and he was trying to explain like there's a place for pop music. There's a reason for it, but he couldn't like, like sell it. But there was this guy that had a quote about that song Holiday um, and he's his name is Joe Lynch and he's the senior editor of Billboard magazine. And he, he said what I think Patrick wanted to say about pop music. And he said, um, sometimes when people are going through hard times, simplicity sticks the landing better than sophistication. Something that lifts your spirits because it's lighter than air and just can't resist how wonderful it is. And I'm like, there it is. That's what pop music gives to us. I, okay, I get it. And I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's pure joy. It is. It is. You're not, you yeah. don't have, I don't need every song to be a Morrissey lyric where I'm going to just think it and chew it over. Like it doesn't have to be like that, Diane. <laughs> or like, 
Mono. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, you're in his territory now. <laughs> I, no, I I do like you too, but like since they kind of came up around the same time, it is nice to have a little one of that and then another, you know, like the other side of yeah pop too. Let's balance. Let's think about what's going on in the world right now because there's some horror. But then let's not. Let's dress up like Madonna and do a podcast instead. Yeah, and like <laughs> blow each other's brains out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Did we like a virgin like a virgin? I think we like a virgin like a virgin. Yeah. Um, Sarah, I had asked you in a text earlier, you've been on the podcast before and you gave us a guilty pleasure song, but have do you have any new ones? Do you have any recent ones? Oh, I feel like everything that I listen to is kind of guilty pleasure. Like I, I don't, the thing is, that's really bad is like, I haven't really diversified my music. I know I'm trying. In ages. I just got into this one artist because I saw a New York Times instagram kind of blurb about her is ethel kane and she's from alabama or florida she i think she's a trans woman mm -hmm. and it's like it's like southern lana del rey Ooh, i love lana del rey It reminds me of like kind of just being in the suburbs in the South and it's hot and you're smoking cigarettes in a room and like just listening to music, kind of like that boredom that you would have maybe. Okay. And so I like her deep voice. So I thought that's been kind of enjoyable to listen to lately, but I wouldn't necessarily call that like, oh, I'm so embarrassed that I'm listening to this. Right, right. Yeah, I've been trying yeah. to diversify too. Like, you know, as much as I had this whole tirade about pop music, when I'm laying out my pool this summer, I've been specifically going to Apple Radio and being like, just hitting the button that's like current pop songs. I'm like, let me just hear it. Let me just listen. And there was yeah. one song that I was jamming and I was like, oh, this is good. I wonder who this is. And I looked and I died laughing. It was Justin Bieber. And I was like, okay, I guess I like Justin Bieber. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I mean, I there's some like Carly Rae Jensen or Jepsen or whatever her name yeah. is that I like too. That's just good, dumb pop. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Lady Gaga. She just came She's out great. with a a power ballad for um, the new Top Gun. And I'm like, I love this. I haven't seen this in a while. Yeah. And I appreciate that she nailed it. Oh, I've got to hear that. I love her. I think she's great. I do too. Corbin yeah. watched 30 minutes of House of Gucci and I had to tell him that was Lady Gaga. And he was like, you know what? Italian women are hot. And then I, I, mentally, I mentioned her name and he was like, wait, what? I was like, how did you not know that that was Lady Gaga? He's yeah. like, I did she did She's blonde, right? Like, you just didn't even know. <laughs> I mean, it sounds pretty harsh to say this. I like Lady Gaga, and I feel like she's Madonna, but in a weird way, like, more talented in the yes. art department. Like, she yes. writes her own music, and she plays instruments, and she was a songwriter for other artists before. Where, like, Madonna's great, way and you can't I mean it's probably kind of comparing apples to oranges but I feel like they get similarities a lot and I do think Lady Gaga is more interesting yeah I'm gonna go back on what I said earlier when I said no one's come close Lady Gaga did and I think you're right she is more talented in that a documentary I was watching even the guys who wrote songs for Madonna and people that worked with her in the recording studio they're like she wasn't a great singer. We had to help her a lot. There was a lot of background singers and we were trying to, took her a long time to actually find her voice and her range. But um, yeah, I think you're right. I think Lady Gaga kind of kicked that door down a little harder because of her talent. Yeah, yeah I, I, I feel like, oh, sorry, Ben. I, I don't think that Madonna with an incredible voice would be any more entertaining. Like if there was a choice, like, like would you would you trade Madonna's style and attitude for a better voice? I sure oh. as well wouldn't. No. No, you can almost categorize it as like, is she's like the punk of pop? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, she's probably close. Her and Britney Spears have probably more similarities than I would say Lady Gaga 
and Madonna. There just right. happened to be two Italian chicks um, where like Britney didn't have a great, I don't think she had that great of a voice. No. She knew how to play play with it. And then she was um, like her sexuality with that. And then her performance and dance background that I thought made yeah, her Yeah, she was a smoking hot, hot dancer that sang in baby voice. I hate her voice. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. If people send me like, no, this is, she's good. I'm like, it, but it's awful. <laughs> it's oh, baby, baby. like, give me a yeah. fucking break. If you're going to tell me that's good. It's not. Yeah. It's not, well, I would say like a classically great voice, but I mean, isn't it fun to do oh, baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm to a, do I just, her vocal fry or whatever she does. Oh my God. And then another one I love to make fun of is Shakira. Oh my God. I like to say that Kermit the Frog went down to Argentina and fucked a goat and then <laughs> somehow made this gorgeous human that's like, la, 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 la. I mean, then when we all were like, okay. <laughs> Tell me one more time. <laughs> Before I get murdered, that goat went down to Colombia and fucked something beautiful. Colombia. I knew I was going to get the country wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> they're Whatever. coming for you i'm racist <laughs> <laughs> they all look alike <laughs> they're all hot is what i'm saying yeah <laughs> um okay sarah before we let you go um what do you have to promote where the listeners can see and hear more of you because you're fucking everywhere and it's great oh, thank you i i only feel like i'm only in my apartment 90 percent of the time um <laughs> talk about your podcast I, have, I love your podcast yes Thank you. I have a new podcast called Lady Journey, the Lady Journey that I host with another uh, funny female comic, uh, Katie Hannigan. And we just kind of talk about the bullshit little journeys that we do personally. Like I just got a new panini press that I'm excited about. I've been into, you know, like makeup tutorials, so that kind of stuff, but guys are open to it too. Or anybody that identifies with going on those dumb journeys. Yeah, the guys have to watch us go through them. I'm currently on day two of a sugar, 21 day sugar detox after hearing God. Katie talk about hers and how good her skin looked. And I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, it's fun to do a challenge, but I've tried to do the no sugar thing and it makes me feel like I just want to cut myself. <laughs> I'll I got to eat bread. You guys are <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to get a day without booze or nicotine behind me. <laughs> oh, God. That's the hardest part, to be honest. Like, I can go without eating desserts, but when it comes to, like, wait, I can't have a drink? Like, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> um, Sarah Feel knows it. that feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah, I love, and, and you guys are so right. It's such a great concept for a podcast because. This, we, why do we do this? Men don't do these journeys for themselves. Why are we always doing this? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I try to think of what like male journeys, I guess doing your like porch or something or like on a mission. I think out, you know, when I watch a reality show, I'll see what is it, Jay Cutler really into like um, getting farm animals. So maybe kind of stuff like that. That's true. Yeah. Corbin will go like, I'm going to build a solar powered gardening system for our garden. Yeah. Watering system for our garden. Okay. That's true. They do. Okay. Yeah. And that's their new thing. And I like, I've never really stuck to a journey forever. No, no, no. I won't even make this 21 days. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, where else, where else can a uh, website, your film festival, tell them, tell them all the things. Um, just follow me. I'm on all social media platforms and I keep my handle the same. So it's at Stolomash, S-T-O-L-L-E-M-A-C-H-E. -E. Easy name. It should, it, we'll put it Easy. in the show Roll off. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you well, performing anywhere soon? Are you coming back to Houston anytime soon? I will be in Houston for a month looking after my mom's house while she's gone. And then I've tagged on a week because I'm doing a kind of a private event for Mike Peterson. Okay. Um, but I'm going to be adding shows. I look into doing like Rudyard's and then the secret group while I'm down there. That's Houston. like uh, at August 26th to September 26th. I'll be okay. in Houston. Great. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. 
Yay. Um, not that we, I mean, Houston's a big city and we are on opposite ends of it. So it's like an hour and a half to see each other, but we'll meet in the middle. <laughs> well, I, my, I'm going to only be by myself. So it's a lot easier for me to like go do things oh, rather nice. than like feel like obligated to hang out with the family. Perfect. Come hang out at my pool. Definitely. Okay. Um, all right. You can just stay on till the very end. I'll just say next week, uh, Ben, it's your turn next week. So I don't know if you've thought about it, but you have a week to think about it. I have not. Okay. I'll let you know very soon. All right. Um, all right, you guys. Well, this is fun. Thank you, Sarah. It's always lovely yeah. to have you on. We did it. Thanks, guys. You want to vote? We did this? it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're voguing. We're voguing to a Madonna episode finally. <gasps> oh, no. Oh. Is that how you? Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs>Rock the Cash Bar is produced by Diane Gallagher. Music by Chuck Savage and Eddie Hawkins. Special thank you to Jeremy Essig for Six Degrees and to Sarah Wessling for the guilty pleasures of vocals. Our website is rockthecashbarpodcast.com and there you can find links to our Spotify playlist and to our Patreon. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you next week. <laughs>